This video is sponsored by AMD and Western Digital. Hey guys, Rob here with EY Gaming and today we're going to be doing part two of our series on how to build a PC. In this episode we're going to be doing the actual build. So I've got here all of the parts required for this build that we saw in the original video. So we've got the case, the processor, the power supply, our storage solution, memory, graphics card and motherboard. The first thing you want to do when setting up a PC for build is make sure you've got all the tools that you need for the build. So for ours, we've got our screwdriver and a pair of scissors, and then we're using a non-conductive surface, so in our case, a mouse mat to do the actual building on. You can also use an anti-static wristband, which will help make sure that you don't discharge any static onto the PC parts as you're building, as you want to make sure you don't damage anything during the build process. Okay guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do is get everything unboxed and ready to go in the build. So you can see here we've taken out our motherboard and the most important thing here is that you get your IO shield out as well and then also it should come with some SATA cables for connecting up your hard drives. In our case we've only got one mechanical drive that requires a SATA connection, which is this one here, and the SSD is an M.2 drive which doesn't require any cables and just secures directly onto the motherboard. We've also got our power supply, and with the power supply, we've taken out the PCIe cables for our graphics card. Depending on how many storage drives you've got, you may need to take out some of the other cables that come with the power supply. It's worth making sure that the power supply you choose has got all the cables that you're gonna need before you buy it. We've then got our processor here, which has got the cooler inside it, our storage, which is the M.2 drive here, the SSD, and then a hard drive, two sticks of eight gigabyte of memory here, and then our graphics card, which for now we've left inside its anti-static bag. Then we've got the power supply cable, some cable ties, which will be really handy for making sure our cables are all tucked away nicely in the case. Our copy of Windows 10, and then obviously the case itself here. Okay guys, so now we're gonna do the pre-installation bits for the motherboard. So this is basically the stuff that we can put onto the board before it goes into the PC case. So the first thing we've done is remove the brackets that you can see here, which were pre-installed onto the board. As for our cooler, they're not required. So we've also unboxed the processor, which is here. Then we have the M.2 drive, our two sticks of memory, and the CPU cooler that comes with the AMD processor. As you can see on the bottom of this, it's got pre-applied thermal paste, so we don't need to put any more thermal paste onto the processor. Okay, so for installing the processor, the first thing you want to do is make sure these brackets are removed and then the latch is lifted up. Then we're going to take the processor and make sure we've matched up the small tick in the corner there with the tick that's on the motherboard. All you're going to want to do is hover this over the socket and then literally drop it into place. This shouldn't require any additional force and if it does, just take it away and then try and replace it so that it slots in nicely. So once that's in place, you then want to pull down the latch and that is your processor secured onto the board. Okay, so once our processor is installed, we now want to install our memory. So you're going to want to make sure that you install the memory in the correct slots on the board. On our motherboard, it's got a little guide here that tells us that we want to be populating this one and this one first. So you're going to want to make sure that you line up the notch here with the notch that's on the board. and simply place the memory in, give it a little bit of force, and it should just clip in nicely. And then again, the same with our second slot. I'm just gonna slide that in. And then it should just clip into place on both sides. Okay guys, so the next thing we're gonna do is install the M.2 drive. So for this on our motherboard, there's a small standoff which you can see here, which originally was in this position. You wanna make sure that that's in the right position for your drive. So for us, we've had to move it to this slot here. And then all you're gonna do is take the M.2 drive out of its box, line it up with the slot here, and then push it in, and it should naturally sort of incline up like that. Within your motherboard box, you should have two very small screws, which will be labeled M.2 screws. And that's what you're gonna to use to secure this onto the board there. So you're just gonna push down on that. 
line it up. So for this system, we're using the Western Digital Blue Drives. So this is a mid-tier gaming system, and this is gonna pro provide the performance we need for that use case. So if you have the budget, you could upgrade this drive to a Western Digital SN750 drive, which is basically a more high performance version, which features a higher read speed and a higher write speed. Some motherboards will come with a heat sink that you can also apply to this, but as you can see with this one, it's just left as is. Okay, so with everything else installed, we're now gonna install the CPU cooler. So with this, it's important, it's important to make note of where your CPU fan header is on your board. So you can see on ours, the fan header is down here. And when the CPU cooler is installed, we'll be able to route the cable around this side and connect it in. With these CPU coolers, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, they have pre-applied thermal paste. So all you're gonna to need to do is set it down on top of the CPU and then start screwing in to these four connections here. Okay, so when you're tightening up these screws, it's really important that you don't over tighten one side before doing the rest. So I'm gonna start by holding onto the CPU cooler and I'm gonna tighten up this corner first. So once you can feel a slight resistance on this corner, you then wanna to move to the opposite corner. And you may find this requires a little bit of extra force. So when you're screwing these in, you just wanna keep screwing until you eventually just get to a natural stop with the screw. Once that's done for all of them, you then wanna just make sure you connect up your CPU fan header into the slot that's on your board. And this will have two little lines on it that match up on the motherboard as well. Okay guys, so now we're gonna install the power supply into the case itself. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is take off the back panel and then your front panel as well. And then with the power supply, you literally just slide it into the back there. And then line it up at the back of the case with the screw holes. It's also worth making sure you don't over tighten these screws as you don't want to thread them and leave it where you can't remove the power supply from the case if you need to. Okay guys, so now we're going to look at putting the motherboard into the actual case. The first thing you want to remember when doing this is to make sure your IO shield is installed. To do this, you're literally going to push it in underneath at the back of the case. And it should just clip in quite nicely. Or not. There we go. Just make sure it clips in all the way around the shield itself. Make sure it's even. And then once that's done, you're ready to put the motherboard into the case. Okay guys, so now we're gonna put the motherboard into the actual case. You wanna make sure your standoffs are all in place and installed to the case. We had to add a few extra ones for this. And then we're just gonna simply lower the board into the case itself. Making sure that we avoid trapping any of these cables. Okay guys, so now we're gonna install the hard drive. Uh, with this, with the case that we've chosen, we've actually got a toolless design for the bay for it. Basically, all you need to do is pull that apart, and then you can sit your hard drive inside there, and there's some little connectors on the sides that will line up with the holes on the drive. So just pull that together, make sure it's clipped in, make sure obviously your connections are available on the back, and then you're just gonna slide that back into the case and it should clip nicely in place. Okay, so now we're gonna connect up the hard drive to both the power and data connections. Okay guys, so the next bit you're gonna to wanna to do is plug in all of your connectors to the motherboard. So you can see down here we've connected up the SATA connection for our hard drive 
And then at the bottom here, we've connected up the front panel switches. So these power switch, the reset switch, and then our power LED switches or power LED light. We've then connected a USB 3 header, a USB 2.0 connector, and then our audio connector in the bottom left. This can vary depending on your motherboard. Obviously ours is for the MSI X570A Pro, but it will pretty much always be along that bottom panel and the SATA connections are normally always on that side there as well. So the next step is to install the graphics card, which we will go on to now. Okay guys, so now we're gonna put in the graphics card. You wanna make sure you remove the brackets on the back here, depending on the size of your card. And then quite simply, all we're gonna do is make sure that's latched back. And then we're gonna push the card in. And then pretty much straight away, you're gonna to wanna to screw this in, both the top there and the second one down below. Okay, so now that the graphics card's been installed, we've installed the power connector and then also cable tied the extra one just so it's not hanging in the case and fed that back through to the rear of the case. Okay guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and try booting it for the first time. So obviously you wanna connect your power cable at the back and make sure that the power supply is switched on. And then just hit the power button at the top of your PC and it should power up. So guys, that is our PC complete and ready for Windows installation. We hope you guys found this video helpful and if you have any questions about your own PC build, feel free to leave these in the comments below or in our Discord server. With PC building, the most important thing is that you take your time in planning and preparing the build. And if you're unsure of anything, make sure you ask someone for help. There are plenty of guides and forums available online that will be able to help you with building your PC and can also be handy in finding more information on your specific parts. With the right preparation, PC building can really be as simple as putting together some Lego. And as long as you take your time and do your research, you should be fine with this. In the next episode, I'm going to go over the final stages of setting up your PC. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you have any questions, then just leave a comment in the section below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Look at this. Come on. Come on. Ready? Okay, we should be fine to take that shot.